You're listening to Funny Peculiar with Jeff Downs. Welcome to another episode of Funny Peculiar. Again, thanks for following, thanks for downloading. Keep telling, telling your friends, keep sharing us out there. Lots of great guests. This week, uh, I've got my first clown. I've got my first circus performer, really. Um, he's called Marco Taylor, or Mark Taylor, but known as Marco. Uh, you can track him down on Facebook, and he is, I'll tell you what he is on Facebook. He's Mark Marco Taylor, so you can f- track him down on Facebook or on Instagram. He is Marcos Circus, so that's Marco with an S and then Circus. So we chat about how he got into it. Uh, he used to be a fire uh, place salesman, hated it, and then got into performing tricks, and it just went from there. And he has a massive love of Norman Wisdom, so we talk about that, and we also have a little chat about, he tells me later on, and I've cut it back in, about uh, Tommy Cooper, which is um, a really great story as well. So thank you again to uh, Marco for coming on the show. So without further ado, um, take it away, and I'll give you Marco Taylor, Circus Performer. So, welcome to uh, another episode of Funny Peculiar Podcast. And in my quest uh, for acts and different performances, I think I found a brilliant one this week because I'm chatting to Marco, who uh, performs and also does circus workshops. So, hello, Marco. Hello, Jeff. Are you all right? <laughs> hello. How are you doing? You all right? I'm very well, thank you. So, yeah, very now, well. Now, just yeah. looking at the your, your, your spec of all the stuff, you, and you've done so much, but I love the fact that you taught the Countess, Countess of Wessex to spin plates. Yes, that, that's right. That's good, and you've thrown knives at Patrick Monaghan, the, co- the comedian. Yes. You have. And I know quite <laughs> a fashion. few. Yes, and I know a few MCs and other people that would probably like to throw knives at Patrick Monaghan to get him off stage because he does go on a bit. And Patrick won't mind because we do know yeah. he we do know him and he, he he will he will do a show and a half, won't he? It just yes, yes, yeah. That's he true. will keep going if he can. Yes. But that's in fact <laughs> that's quite a good novelty for all comedy clubs to uh insert into their night that um, if a comic does go over his time or her time a knife can be thrown loosely towards the stage and then instead of the yeah. red light system you'd know to get off anyway yeah that, yeah would be fine it'd work well so, and uh, so and you've been and the last time I spoke to you you've been busy because you've been doing lots of summer shows so yes. in your line of work so where have you been recently uh, I was at the Yorkshire show which I do every every year um down in Harrogate, the, the great Yorkshire show. Yeah, and, um, that, and sorry, that's so Yorkshire is so that's kind of north of England or just to, to over to the right, isn't it? Of, of yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yes. It's class as, as north of Yorkshire. Yes, Let's do north. <laughs> and, and what was the festival? What what was it all about? The great Yorkshire show. It was the hundred and sixtieth Yorkshire show this year. Yeah, been going a long time. Um, it was my seventh year with them. Right, uh, which was really good. I approached them really just visiting um and they have a tent which is this the discovery tent um lots of hands-on activities and i noticed there was nothing uh there that i did circus skills so i approached them with an email and i think it was in the hour <laughs> they'd got back to me and said could you go down for an interview and uh would you mind going on uh, you know and, and being on the show and i said yeah that'd be fantastic you know it's it's really good for business uh, good for advertising um, so they, they asked me to promote the show with them as well. So I went down for a photo shoot um, in the first year, which was brilliant. Um, and that's uh, and that's kind of unusual for so it's an agricultural show. Uh, yeah, yeah. But, but in the middle, they they have other entertainments, and in the middle, we've got you doing circus skills. Yeah, well, it was mainly because it was uh, educational, uh, which circus skills is educational, um, and this tent they had was an educational tent. Right. So it was it, with all the different, even though there's a lot of farming involved, um, there's a lot of farming anyway um, in at the show. Um, so they just had to have something a little bit different, um, which is busy. You know, it's um, you know they've just changed it. That last week it was uh, twelve hour shifts, which <laughs> was right. I sort of pulled my wife in a bit to help me out yeah. having tea breaks. That's um, a long time. Yeah. That's a long it, time. It, long time to be doing circus skills. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And let's so let, and let's just get a shout out for you now. So Instagram, are you on Instagram? Have yes, I'm on Instagram. So what's, yeah. what's what's your uh, what's your account name for Instagram? 
Uh, Marco Circus with a K. I think okay. everyone sings Marco with a C, uh, but it's Marco with a K. <laughs> Marco Circus. Brilliant. On and, Instagram. And Facebook. You're on Facebook. Facebook, Marco Circus Workshop. Right. Um, yeah, and, and Twitter as well. Twitter. Yeah. And you've got. And, <laughs> Marco and, Circus. Brilliant. And you've got a website as well. I have, yes, Marco Circus Workshop. UK. Brilliant. Um, which I'm. Um, pretty much try to update as much as I can um, I'm going to plan on a new one hopefully soon I uh, need to work on that when I've got a bit of spare time but it's, <laughs> but it's difficult as a solo performer yourself that you've got mm. to for, pardon the pun spinning all these plates but yes. um, but you have to don't you as a as a you're not just a circus performer I take it you've got to be a bit of a businessman as well yeah to see, I, I've been doing it now for 11 years and I, I think it's always grown each year uh, and you're, you're always learning, you know, you're seeing something, oh, I won't do that next time, or I'll bring that in the act. Um, but, yeah, you're always um, always looking for new places, and it does get you in a lot of places, you know, and you do a lot of unusual things, uh, which you don't probably get with, with other things, with probably magic and and, and other type of entertainment. Um, it is a hands-on, it, it's open for everyone from, you know, as they always say, from 1 to 99, you know, um, yeah. as I've... I've come across that over the years with with the age groups, and it has, and we will, and we'll talk about that because all the different you do, lots of different activities: scarf juggling, beanbag yeah. juggling, the plate spinning, the diablo, the Chinese ribbons, stilts. So you do it all. But let's go back to where before hmm. you were doing the how. What were you doing when you started up with at school? Were you interested in circus acts or not at all? What, always. I always loved the circus, always loved the comedy of it, the clown inside of it. Um, big lover of sort of Norman Wisdom, uh, who was, who was inspired me. Um, and Norman Wisdom, his, sorry, his, just and Norman Wisdom, yeah. he was kind of a 50s, should we, 40s, 50s sort of British film star, would we say? Over yeah. Here? Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was, he, he was um, of course, he started off as a stand up um, comedian oh, with playing he? different instruments and things. And, and he really. That's all he did. He had a dinner suit, you know, like a dinner suit with tails, and that's what he would go on as. Um, and it was a, it was a magician who actually made um, non wisdom what he is. Uh, many many years ago in Scarborough, of all places. So what? So 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 you say? So he he was a very physical act, wasn't he? Non yes. wisdom. I think yeah. he, he would leap around. He was very acrobatic. So you say? Um, you just said there a magician. It was that made him. Do you mean a magician, an actual person who taught him stuff, or you mean he was a magician himself? It was pretty- well, I always think like a lot of entertainment, a lot of people you see on the TV, that they sort of fell into it, as you used to say. Yeah. Um, and it was David Nixon, um, who was a, the, one of the big magicians of the day then. Okay. Um, and that was a summer season at Scarborough. And his act wasn't going very well, and he'd asked Norman to be a stooge. He was a warm up act. Right, just okay. Us. And he asked him to be a stooge in the audience to come out and, and mess his, his magic trick up. And he sent him off into the centre, in, into the town of Scarborough, to, to buy a suit. To get yourself a suit because you can't go in your tails, you'd stand out like a sore thumb. So he went off into the town, bought a suit which didn't fit him. Um, and literally, when he was leaving the shop, he's, he's, all right, I know they're reading his books, but um, the, the shop owner actually threw the hat across the road and said, Well, you might always have the hat, you paid for it, and threw him the hat. Um, and he, he did the show, got up and messed the trick up in his tight fitting suit, realized he got the laughs. And then the rest is history. Really? That was how yeah. it was bought? Okay, I didn't yeah. know yeah. that. It's one of the statues in London, a famous statue, where I think they have the soup kitchen and a lot of the homeless um, go there. And, and he was, no, no shoes on his feet, um, curled up under the statue. And that's when the, the sergeant major, if it was at the time, had said, look at some, why don't you join the army? Um, and that's what he did. He, he joined the yeah he joined the army. He, he learned to play instruments in the army. That's what he could play nearly every instrument going. Really, he was that yeah. multi talented. He could do. It. And that was his act. He used to go on and tell jokes and play instruments and do daft things. Um, and that was his act. And and he, he took that on. Uh, and um, that was and he went when he came out of the army. He went looking for fame. And he walked from London to to Wales, to Cardiff to see a very big um, entertainment agent. I can't think his name at the moment. He, he walked from London to Wales? Yeah, to Cardiff. He hell. walked. He walked. Found this agent. And he went to this agent's house, uh, the, his office, Yeah. said, done his tricks in front of him, and the agent went, pretty much, really? don't really want your son. And he went, you're joking, I've walked all this way, and there's a, there's a, there's a guy who does him now, uh, Glenn, 
who's one of the best impersonations really? of known wisdom okay. in the country. Okay, all right. He would be fantastic to get on your show right. as well. Okay, all right, well, I'll try and get I'll send his details over to you. And well, Glenn, yeah. he's, and he, that's what he does. All he does is known wisdom. And he, he does it for charity. He walked it last year. He did the London to Cardiff walk really? in charity of the Norman Wisdom oh, wow. Memorial Fund. Wow, wow, that's brilliant. But, Norm, just... but he come back, Norm Wisdom, made fame, of course, with David Nixon. Yeah. And when he was famous, this so-called producer, this guy, then followed him and said, oh, I want you on a show, or one of the show, big American shows. And he went on it, uh, and he said to him, you don't know who I am, do you? And he said, I was stood in front of you and told him the story, and he was, like, mortified, you know. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And this is and his book, what's Norman's book called again? I think it's uh, One Good Turn. One Good Turn. One Good Turn, That's yes. his autobiography, so it sounds like yeah. a good read. Uh, during the interview, uh, I chatted to Marco about Norman Wisdom, but we also chatted afterwards about um, Tommy Cooper, and this is Marco's story about how Tommy Cooper... Uh, he became famous in he was a famous English comic from about the 50s onwards right up to the 80s so here we go with Marco and he just explains about how Tommy Cooper's famous hat came about the fez was only by chance because he'd, he used to wear piff hat oh really you know, the, that's that was... army piff hats when he was in the army he used to go and do his comedy and, and do his bit of magic and he'd have his piff hat on and he forgot to put it on one night he'd come out in Egypt and he walked on stage and he thought, I forgot my hat. And as he said that, there was a, a waiter walked past him and he grabbed the fez off the waiter's head and put it on his head. Oh, really? He grabbed so... it off and put it on and everyone laughed. And he thought, oh, hey, up, here we go. Was... This has got to laugh. Was... But that was that. But, but he's, he's magic. He fell into that. You remember, he was a professional magician. So he was, he, he, was a, he was a professional uh, He's a professional magician. Yeah. And when he started on in the club circuit, Tommy Cooper, he set everything up. Very nervous he was because he liked to drink. He was a very nervous guy. And he set everything up on the stage. And he had a gag which used milk. And he used to fill the milk and it would disappear like most magicians do with water now. And he set the, they set the trick up. And when he went on stage, he was that nervous, he knocked the milk over. And the milk fell on and smashed on the stage. Right. He then tried to grab something else, knock that, and that fell. Well, everyone just fell into laughter. Right. And he was, he's, he was a professional magician. He was mortified that they were laughing at him. Yeah. So he panicked and walked off stage. And he walked off down the corridor back to the dressing room, absolutely mortified himself. But then the stop, he could hear the laughter was still continuing and yeah. continuing. And again, he thought, hang on. Yeah. Yeah, rest is history. He started uh, to make mistakes on his tricks, and that was. I think that, it's amazing. It is a credit. And just um, normal wisdom. And so you're a bit say. of a, a a fan of normal wisdom. You kind of yeah, right, oh, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. I did. Met, I met him once. Um, ah, right. Years ago, uh, and had a one to one with him with a with a photograph at one time, Brilliant. which I put up on my Instagram. Um, and that was that was mag- magical for me. You know, this guy was then I think in his late eighties. Yeah, was falling around and stuff. So and, he was and, still, and all of that. He was yeah. still doing it quite late, wasn't he? he? Was he was still prattling around and he could do it in his old age, couldn't he? Yeah, I think he till the day he went. I think he, he even in the the care home he was in. Yeah, he stopped. He never stopped. <laughs> you know? yeah, and you like, shouldn't. You no, shouldn't no. stop. I think if you if you love what you're doing in this type of industry. Um, that's what you do, you know what I mean? And yeah. it, it, it is, it's a bug. You, you don't want to stop, and, and, and many haven't, you know. And, and they've all inspired me over the years, Tommy Cooper, people like that. Sure. Um, and, what uh, did, sorry, and what did Norman say to you when you did chat in that brief moment, however long you got? Was there any... Well, it was one I'd, I'd signed, I got an autograph signed with him, and it was very busy in the seat, and we'd gone over the road, uh, myself and my wife, uh, to get some, some a takeaway. And while I was stood in the takeaway shop, I just spotted him coming down the stairs, the steps of the town hall. Uh, and I was where, itching to go. Where this is in Middlesbrough. So, no, okay, in Middlesbrough right, town yeah. hall. Oh, wow. Right, okay, he was over there. Uh, yeah, and I just, I literally went across the road. Um, and it was nobody. It was one of the moments where there was nobody else about. Yeah. And he, come, and he always wore a cap. He still wore a cap when he was off stage. Um, and he come down the steps and I, I sort of shook his hand again and said, Norman, great performance. Um, can I have another photo? Uh, and he said, yeah, he said, uh, just tell me when, son. So, like, you know, I was 19-year-old then, you know, yeah. shake camera uh, and held me camera. And I said, right, I'm ready. And then he paused for me. He did his little pause. Oh, his, did he? Right. Still pause and, uh, and took the photo. And it was just a, a really nice moment. Uh, uh, and off he toddled off onto his tour bus, you know. Oh, see, uh, and he was so he was touring at that point. Yeah, touring with a band. And they were all, like, yeah, on the, on the, on the, on the tour bus. <laughs> 
I'm sure we've stayed in some hotels. I couldn't imagine him sleeping on the bus. Yeah. But uh, never know on them days. <laughs> That's probably oh, brilliant. That's but it's... That helped, yeah, you know, from way back in my career, like you're saying, from from being, uh, and then I got into, into the fireplace industry of all things, and that was my my full time job working. Really? With so you were selling fireplaces. Yeah, I can sell you a stove, Jeff, if you want. Uh, that's, well, well, I'm thinking of the Alan Partridge episode, Dante's Fires. Remember the uh, so, which is for anybody listening again. I'm going on to Alan Partridge, which is a comedy character over here, and it's called It's Alan Partridge. Check that out, BBC Television. It's aha. Uh-huh. Well, <laughs> uh-huh. So, so you so you sold fireplaces, and that was pretty much it for how long? Um, I would say, I st- to be truthful, I still dabble in it, you know, I still, oh, now right. and I'm quiet, I still get, yeah. there's a shop, so I know I'll say, would you mind coming in and helping us out for a day or so, you know what I mean, and, and if I've got the time, then yeah. I suppose you've been doing it all your life, 30 years it would be, um, well, selling places, which is very sad, but you know, well, it's, no, a, it's, it's a living, it's and a, you... yeah, and, and that's what happened with my circus, I was, I was so busy on a weekend, and of course with the retail industry, you've got to work Saturdays in shops, yeah. um, and I was losing a lot of money by working in a shop. So uh, one of the companies decided to give me part-time work so I could work the weekends, you know. And what was the moment when you, and uh, we were talking, I think it was a, was in an advert somewhere, you just saw this circus skills workshop and you just went... Yeah, yeah it was, it was the, um, the, like the adult learning education that come round, you know, comes round every year yeah. uh, for the start of September. And you've got your maths, your English extra French, you know, and there the circus still stood out. I went, I've got to do it, you know what I mean? I've, I've just got to go and do that and, and see what it's about. And it was only across the way, you know, it was in, in the next town. Um, so that was it. Like I said, the rest is history. I went there, met a lady called uh, Kathy Sprague, who was a, an aerial artist. Okay. Uh, and she an sort of... aerial artist being trapeze or anything. Trapeze, to... yes. And there's lots uh, yeah. of different types of areas, not just trapezes, hoops and ropes and things like that, isn't there? Yeah, an amazing lady um, who'd sort of um, retired, not retired from it, but literally had, had stopped doing the touring yeah. uh, around Europe and uh, decided to, to set up um, a workshop, um, which was fantastic, you know, and I just felt I had the ability after a while, you know, it's all to do with coordination and balance, and I had that. Yeah. So I started to improve you know, uh, on my skills. And then thought, no, there's a business for this. Um, something there's, else. And there's nobody really in the area where, where I'm based. I think you had to go as far as Newcastle or as far down as Sheffield yeah. um, to, to find this, what I was doing really, you know. And this was about 11 years ago, 12 years ago? Yeah, yeah, 11 years, yeah, about 11 years ago. And, and yeah. what was it, just take us back to that, that first day as you walked in on that, workshop and not knowing what you were going to expect or what to do what how were you feeling what were you absolutely just nervous or were you just enthusiastic i'm going to do this well i was nervous because i was very quiet i was i was very shy at school and and very shy about everything i would go in a corner out the way i wouldn't get involved in anything um and I just felt it was the right time to actually you know and I still had that feeling it didn't wait like going back to school you know and you had that sort of well, you know, can I do this? And, and and you were doing things in front of people, and and I still found it quite embarrassing. But then all of a sudden, I realised that when you have the ability to do something, which I find now or over the years <clears throat> with a lot of schools that I've taught, yeah, uh, and children, my own son who was very very quiet, um, he he went in front of this whole school, and and did the old float and suitcase mime act, right, um, which which put into my my act, um. Which there's a, there's a lot of people do it, or very famous people do it out there. But I actually seen it when I've seen it was a magician that was doing it, Chris Angel, an American right, magician. Okay. And I've seen the YouTube of him doing it, and that's what got me onto it. Um, but there is uh, another gentleman out there who does that type of thing, and everyone says, "Oh, it's a bit like so and so." Is it? <laughs> I never seen him do it. I seen someone else do it. You know. And just to, and the mime. So the particular floating suitcase. This is a mm. kind of a mime. At, that's when your yeah. the person comes on stage and it looks like suddenly the suitcase is held by an invisible force and they can't move it. Is that right? Is that? That's, that's it. Yeah. You never leave go of it. You sort of keep all of it. And that's what's. And 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 kids are fascinated by that. Uh, children are fascinated with everything like that. I do the old Derek Morkham paper bag trick. Right, remember that one? throwing, yeah. so he's holding it in the bag, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and and the old sort of laurel 
Stan Laurel hat flick and things like that, which I bring these back the old school into the act, Bra- and kids can't the, get enough of it. What's the hat flick one again? It, pretty much when you've got to put your hat on, so I've got a ball of hat, as soon as yeah. I've got a ball of hat on, it literally flicks off your head like a spring. Ah, right, it's okay. just a hand movement, but the kids <laughs> find it fascinating, right. and then it goes into the ball trick. And I'll just tell you a little story about Eric Morecambe. Uh, he was interviewed one time, and he actually admitted he actually pinched the act uh, from a clown. Really? Yeah, he actually admitted in an interview that he'd seen it. Of course, TV was starting to get really big then when they were on the, on the TV, so everyone only sees Eric Markham do the bag trick. No one's ever seen anybody else do the bag trick, if you know what I mean, yeah, when yeah. the television. So he'd obviously seen it at a show before, you know, not on TV, and he went home and practised it and, and took it to the TV. And, so, and it was and nice to tell him to say that. It was nice to come out with that and, uh, and, and tell everyone that that's how he found the bag trick it, it was never him which but is great but it's interesting like music talent borrows genius steals as they say and famously you know the british bands in the 60s you know stole hook line and sinker the blues from america and crazy yes, yes. and in a way a lot of acts you know borrow use you know yeah, bend yes. tweak and develop their own act yeah definitely and do, um, do you find that yeah, you, you see it all the time, and it might be slightly different twigged, like you say, different ways, uh, but you, you do see it. A lot of people have the same sort of act um, and, and just a little bit of difference. And, 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 it, and because it's not been used for a long, long time, it, to the children of today, yeah. it's brand new. Yeah. You know, they're, they're seeing something new, which is, and they can do it as well. That's what I always want to do with my circus skills. I never, um, I always say to people, when youngsters come up to me and they'll say, oh, well, I'd love to do this when I'm older. And I'll say, well, do you want to be a teacher or do you want to be a performer? Yeah. And if the pause on that, then I always say you want to be a, a performer. Because if you want to be a teacher, it's there already. I believe it's in your heart to, to want to teach and want to, you know, show what you do and, uh, and, and bring it through. Well, a lot of people do perform. A lot of my friends perform. Yeah. Um, and, and a lot of them I know don't do a lot of teaching. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I wanted it to be basic. I always class as a basic circus skills teacher. I'm not the most amazing juggler and, you know, and, and Diablo. And it, I'd rather try and show my, when I do the shows, there's a few things which are difficult to do in a lot of practice. But I like to show the children that what I'm doing is something they will pick up and they will learn that. And you never lose their capture then. They, they'll stay and watch you because they believe yeah. they can do it. If you start a show off, where you're doing seven or eight clubs as a performance show, it's fantastic. Um, but then the doubt sets in. If I'm doing a workshop and I start off with a workshop like that, the doubt would set in that I'm never going to be able to do that. Yeah, that's what you don't want to do. You want to keep a positive mind with the children, then put doubt in the mind. You know, it's 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 just that fine, fine sort of uh, and, gap. And, and who's who's harder to entertain, children or adults? Um. It's it's interesting. Children are probably the hardest at a certain age level, um, but I always start my shows off with a bit of comedy. I always try the hat flick or something, and you and they laugh. Once you get an audience laughing within the first thirty seconds, yeah. then you've got your audience. You see, they then believe in you. Yeah, um, that's how I look at it. If um, I, I like that side of it, that clown inside of it, you've got to have fun in it um, because it gets boring. You know, so and and you need to hold the kids, but adults are the same. Adults will sit and watch, um, and even they'll come up and ask questions. How do you do the bag trick? You know? Yeah, right. How okay. How do you do the float and suitcase? And it's there if you see it, but it's amazing how their minds go elsewhere. You know. But do um, you get the adult that then comes up to you to try and go? Oh, I did that. Oh yeah, I know what you're right. They, they try like they. Just... Oh yeah, we've got some good jugglers come on. You know, a lot of dads come on, and the, uh, and I always I'll know it's in the student years where they've been bored and sat, nothing to do. <laughs> they've picked up some oranges, you know, and they've started teaching themselves to juggle. And they're self-taught and they'll juggle clubs and things like that. And I think that's great yeah. because they, they're really enjoying themselves because they'll stay on there for half an hour or so juggling clubs uh, and getting like an audience that. as well. Like, oh, yeah. you know, and it helps me. It helps my workshop when people pop in and, uh, and can juggle yeah. uh, and might show them another trick, you know, they can start learning, you know, but, practicing. But let's go back because I want to go back to 11 years. Yeah. Cause I'm t- so we, you walk into this workshop because I want where it all started. This is what interests me as well. So as you went in and this lady was there and how many other people were in the workshop at that point? At that time, probably about 15. 15, 15 okay. People, yeah. And what was the first thing you learned? 
Uh, first thing I learned was was beanbags, juggling. Just juggling beanbags. beanbags. Yeah, just juggling beanbags, just to get that movement right. Which, of course, I'd never juggled or done any of this before. And this was your never, first ever. lesson, yeah. first workshop, and you just spent the yeah. afternoon or how many hours it was just yeah. juggling beanbags. Just juggling beanbags, uh, loosening up, you know, doing a bit of exercise and. Um, and, and literally just juggling beanbags, just getting your coordination right, um, which was, to me, it was easy, but it was still a difficult task to start to start juggling. Like everyone finds that, you know. And how uh, did you feel at the end? Were you like, yes, that... that oh, yeah. It, what, how do you feel? It. Yeah, you know, I've got six weeks of this. This is great, you know what I mean? Right, Every okay. week, and, and, and it was just, and everything, we just learned something new on top of that, you know, um, every week. Yeah. Uh, so you, as well as trapeze. <laughs> we had, yeah, so so during the day you were selling fireplaces, the murky world of fireplaces, then you were yeah. literally running to your course each week to then... Yes, uh, yeah, that's I've, right. I've had enough of uh, yeah. coal effect. I'm going for the real effect of... Yeah, juggling. out of the fire. <laughs> oh, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and so this was a six-week course, and then by the end of the six-week course, were you completely sold and and you something had clicked in your head? What had clicked or what had happened? Oh, I think just that it was, it was great that I could do something different... Um, and everyone in the class was was all right. You found a lot of people didn't have the the ability, but they kept at it. Um, you got the odd couple that would drop out. You know, it wasn't for them. Um, but then you, you, I then found because I I pushed it further myself. Um, the floating suitcase, things like that stuff. I looked up on the internet and was really uh, getting into. Uh, I then found I could show them. You know, and yeah. say, just show you this. I've been practicing, and so you ended up getting an audience in there. You know, of people who, who loved what you were You're doing, doing. Um, and they they appreciated what you were doing, um, and and that went on for a few terms. Yeah. Um, probably done that for maybe maybe two years, something two like that years. over the terms. And, and this time, yeah. as it's going on, what do your family think? I mean, your relatives must be going. Well, he's he's lost it. He's, he, he's, he's yeah. <laughs> did you, did you yes. have what was the what was the yeah what was your uh, what we have you... a good family you know and they are a real good loving family and we're very close and uh, everyone laughs you know it become it can become a joke oh I'm learning to juggle and you know and yeah. people find it funny but then they like the idea that you're doing something different you know yeah. just coming home after work sitting down watching telly and um, there's something else you know to do yeah. uh, and and learn a new skill. Uh, which I think everyone should do if you have the time. Everyone should try. Yeah. Um, so, so that was that was the, the sort of the buzz that I was improving. I was getting there, you know, yeah. every time. Yeah. yeah. And, then, and when and when it came, so you so this for a couple of years, and then it's looking more and more likely like you could do this full time. So, at what point do you remember? handing in your sort of notice at work and that was it and how how was marco yeah. and his workshop born was was this is about sort of 10 years yeah, ago I, nine years ago was it well i think I, I i got advice off kathy who was teaching me um put it to her do you think it's it would work and she had no doubt in her mind she said yep yeah, go for it advise me to, to to get in touch with equity yeah um to which literally equity cover everything for me the insurance um uh Pretty much put put together um, a letter, letter to them. Uh, they passed that and got my equity card card for the post, which is very exciting. You know, when you become a part of that elite troop of people, you know, yeah, yeah. got the card um, and then set out a business plan really of of, of build myself a work a website, um, get myself some leaflets printed. Uh, uh, just as any business, you know, you. Yeah. you dive into of it that course. way and then and i think word of mouth was the first thing to start to get a party because that was yeah. the first thing i ever did as a party so you were doing um, parties so can you remember your very first show your very first party yeah, yeah. and, and, uh, and yeah. how did it go what was it like um it went very well you know you always have to and i was always very with juggling clubs i was very nervous of juggling clubs i hadn't really practiced them but it was it was part of my my list of things that were laid out you know to yeah. to form so but then I'd turn things into comedy. So if I felt I couldn't do anything really well, then I would drop that into a routine. So if I knew I could only juggle maybe the clubs for a, a few seconds, yeah. then if I dropped one, then it would, it would 
rebound back off the children by saying who someone didn't clap or someone didn't and it's amazing what, what you can do even now making a mistake it's turned into yeah. now i don't have any worries about making a mistake yeah. years ago i did now if i drop some it so what it's part of the act and that's, that's and that's quite that's common it. with a lot of performers that yeah, th- yeah. when they come off stage they think oh i've i've done i've missed the line or done something and yeah. no one ever spots it uh, it's it's kind of or they just think it's all part of the act, which is kind of what happens to you when you yeah you drop something. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And the same with I did a bit of acting with the panto recently, and and that was like that. You know, one of the shows you like said something wrong. Oh, and, it just, and oh, yeah. And where were you panto? Where did you do that? Billingham Forum. We were, we were at uh, Billingham Forum with Tom Rolfe Productions, um, uh, and that that was uh, back at uh, Easter. Brilliant. He's so this year, uh, working with Lloyd Daniels, uh, Ricky Groves, off EastEnders, ah, Gary. Right. Yeah, Gary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the so, Gary the Gary's man. <laughs> and so, and then, so you were doing a lot of, so you did a lot of workshops. So, uh, and then you still today, obviously, you do your workshops and you're getting from, as you say, from one to 99, they're all coming in in all age groups. But when yes. you're teaching children, um, what do you tend to start the little ones off? What What do they want to sort of get going with yeah well i'll start uh, normally four four year four year, uh, sorry five years and upwards yeah. on parties because i just be a certain i used to be six year olds and i realized you're learning um five year olds are more advanced um right. now i think my children are more advanced it, you, you sometimes surprise yourself how good they are you know at, at juggling um uh and then if i'm doing schools then i will do a lot of reception and nursery so you'll do some scarf juggling yeah. and some ribbons so nice nice and simple um which they just throw them about and it's great because it's still they're actually to them they're the best juggler in the world yeah right you know, at that age just throwing a scarf and catching it yeah um, so it's small things um it's big in the mind and it it, it works that's why yeah, it works well, for all that, ages that's a great line small things but big in the mind and I yeah think that's yeah a, that, that's so and that can be for anybody that's attempting to do something that you don't think you can do, just try well, yeah. try small and then it gets bigger. Yeah, all ages, you know, when I've done a lot of work with, with Kerr Holmes and the WI, the Wild yeah. Indians, as one of They are amazing. It, they, every time I, I'm always blown away by each time I go and do and um, what to expect. And the WIs, I didn't expect what I expected from them. Yeah. And, literally within an hour one hour we'd normally deal with them and it and they're lovely they took it all away they they a lovely speech at the end i think one lady had said you know you've took we've literally got involved for an hour out of this world yeah and we forgot about the outside world for one hour yeah. and we've laughed and we've giggled and we've enjoyed ourselves and that's what it's about you know it's it's getting away from everything that's yeah. happening in the- and, and how and how um, and how does that make you feel when you know you've just entertained and you've allowed people to release themselves for an hour? Oh, it's 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 the best tonic, you know. It really is. Um, the, you just adrenaline continues; it just kicks in, you know. And you've got yeah. to be like that. The Yorkshire Shore, twelve-hour shifts. Yeah, you've got yeah. adrenaline. It's in. You've got to enjoy what you're doing because you might as well pack in then and, and go back to selling fireplaces. Yeah. If if you don't um if you don't enjoy it. Sure. But, but they turn young. You know the the WI ladies. There was a 93 year old on pedal goes was flying past me. You know I was like uh, panicking uh, that she's gonna say that again. <laughs> she was on pe- pedal goes. <laughs> pedal goes. These That's... are like a four wheeled little platforms, right. which are the built up from to unicycle. So you get uh... a four wheeled, a two wheeled. And and then the one wheel unicycle, right, okay. and they're great for keeping the balance, strengthening your, your muscles in your legs. Um, and they were like children; they were really? screaming like children. Wow. They, they literally went. It, it took them back over. Yeah. Um, they loved it that they could giggle and and said some one lady said, "I've, I've not laughed for two weeks." Really? You know, oh. what's going on in, in in life and things, and and this is just I've I've just within the first minute I'm laughing again. You know, um, and that's the magical that's what i like about and it that's it's, what you enjoy and then yeah. and then for you to and then how do you so and tell me about have you got a, a, a worse gig that you've ever had somewhere where it's just, this has not gone right or a goat's run through your set or so do, is there um, any stories that you've got there that something's gone completely wrong i think the only you know i've been very lucky um i think i've did i did want to uh, a care home um 
one day, and and it was packed. They, they brought all the all the ladies and gentlemen in to sit down, and and some had the grandkids with them as well. And um, we we I did a demonstration, uh, and one of the ladies sat behind me, and I didn't. Every time I sort of reverse walking back talking, she was trying to grab my bum. Right, <laughs> uh, and so I sort of kept kept the way, but she was shouting all the time at me, saying things, bless them, you know. Um, a yeah. lot of them have um, uh, dementia and, and whatever, yeah, but it's, sure. so it's really good for it um, um, because they do remember things from the past uh, with with juggling and spinning plates. And one of the grandkids had got up, and I said, "Oh, we do the paper bag trick," and not even thinking, I sort of held the bag there, and I, and I always say to the kids, "Whatever you do, don't miss the bag." Now, as I, as I said this, this lady behind me shouted, who the hell are you calling it? Effing bag. <laughs> <laughs> I went, no, and trying to, well, all the assistants all started laughing. Yeah, right. And I'm trying to get, dig a hook out of it, you know. Yeah. Uh, and then straight after that, when I'd finished, was, I said, oh, shall we have a go at the, with the spinning plates and ribbons? Yeah. And one of the girls said, well, have, get Mary to have a go. Mary, come and have a go at some ribbons. She sat in a chair and I walked up this this old lady and she just stared at me and <laughs> and... Uh, you know, and I'm a lovely person. And I went, here you go, Mary. Would you like to try a ribbon or a spinning plate? And it says she, she looked up at me. She looked at the clock. And I'm not going to swear, but she did swear. It started with F and finished with F. <laughs> when are you going to off? <laughs> and I just stared at her. And, and I actually looked at the clock and went, well, I'm really sorry, Mary, but we've gone over a half hour to go yet. <laughs> so you <laughs> have a ribbon. And it... You know, them moments that yeah. the odds were, were really, <laughs> you know, they didn't know any different, yeah. you know. Uh, they just, they were quite happy to go back to the room, you know what I mean? Who's this guy here, you know, sat here juggling and things like that, you know. But uh, that, I'd say that, in front of my memories, that's probably one of my worst, I think. But but then again, it went okay. It went, you as know, always, uh, it comes it out. As, and uh, I know some things can happen, things can fall on kids and maybe a jug and ball will yeah. bounce, but it's, I've um I've been it's not me myself that gets injured you know I'm being, yeah. so I've been and, well, and do, do you can you get injured is it will you uh, do you do unicycle and stilts I mean if you fall off that you could really hurt yourself I used to do unicycle a long time ago I've not done any any for a while mainly because it used to be brought into teaching side with schools and if you go into a school with a unicycle anybody who teaches unicycle will say that it's back breaking you yeah. know and you, you've got it then you've got you know, one of the teachers holding them on one side and you're holding the kid the other side and then trying to go across. It's the hardest thing to learn. Yeah. It takes so much practice. It's not something you learn overnight. Um, and, and that's hard work. So I knocked that on the head. I thought, oh, you know, unicycle, you can go in the cupboard for now. Right. So, that, <laughs> so unicycle is one of the hardest things. But what else is sort of... And we've talked about stuff that is really easy and good for kids to learn. What's one of the most... We've got unicycle. What's another very, very hard thing to do? I think juggling clubs. Clubs can be yeah. quite difficult. If uh, It's a different format to, to juggling beanbags or, you know, or balls. It's completely different. Um, and, what, and how is that... Di- so with, with the balls, that's a sort of hand-eye coordination thing, but with clubs, it's a little bit different? Well, they're all uh, hand-eye coordination, but you've got to... With beanbags, you, you work... Everyone sort of works on a triangle, so you're looking straight ahead to a point. Right. And you watch the beanbags go over that point, and that will send a signal to your brain to where you to move your hands and coordinate. Yeah. Clubs, you've got to go opposites, so they're going out over. So then you've got to change your eye movement to each side, left to right. Right. right to, so it's a different coordination, you know, um, brain skill as we call it. Yeah. Uh, that's where the brain sort of starts to give up, thinking, "Oh, that's too much to take in at once," and then they start flying everywhere. So it's coordinating and bringing everything back in together. You right. Know. Okay. Oh, so, that's a, well. I tell you what, I saw at this Oldham Circus Festival. I don't know if you've heard of them. They're called Project V, and it's right. two lads. And look, check it out on YouTube. And anybody listening, and I'm hoping to get them on the show. They've agreed. So um, I, I hope to. And they're on two. They've taken juggling forward. So they're on this like spinning platform either side on this sort of giant arm thing that yeah, spins yeah. and they're juggling back and forth for the clubs. And you just yeah. describing how difficult 
juggling with clubs is and they're standing on spinning platforms oh, oh yeah amazing that, people are amazing it's they, amazing they, what people do it's the performance yeah that it, performance side yeah it is and what's your and when you sort of if you just want to have a little bit of a practice or you just want to switch off yourself and what mm. what's your favorite thing just to what one do you have you never fallen out of love with which which little trick um i think the flower stick or, or devil stick as we call it um, it's called what I, I use is devil sticks, and they're uh, like a shaped piece of wood um, dowling which goes very thin and then goes wide at the end, okay. so it's, it's it's very balanced. Yeah. And you have two hand sticks which have a silicon rubber on to yeah. to and you can do lots of tricks with them. Um, and I used to always have it as a devil stick, but then I was going into a school once, and it was a Catholic school, <laughs> and, and the head teacher rang me up and said, I've noticed that on your website you've got them down as devil sticks. Is there any chance you can change the name? I said, yeah, I can change it to flower sticks, which is a little bit different, which yeah. have got tasks at the end, but a different shape and what have you. Um, so I went into school, all set up, full, full um, audience there, uh, started off, introduced the flower stick, kid puts a hand up at the front and I like looking at them and, and, and say, well, answer the question. Yes, that's not a flower stick. That's a devil stick. <laughs> I turned to the teacher who was sat at the end and looked at the teacher and she just put her head down in her hands. Excellent. I went, you can't get one passed on the children, you can't, you can't, but, but I've left it at that. I always leave it now as, as flower sticks now. I've never changed it, but, but it is a devil stick, which well, you, is one well, of my favourites. You could go to reverse and say it's a Jesus pole or something like that. Or to, <laughs> yeah. So why, why is it called a devil? That sounds even worse. That does that. I've just realised what I've said there. Disgraceful. <laughs> disgusting. Um, uh, uh, the, uh, what, so why is it called a devil stick? <laughs> well, as, as far as I I've, what I looked into, um, your, your flower stick has the tassels on the end. And when it's spinning around, gives the impression of a flower. I'll probably be wrong for this. I'll, I'll say this, and some of you aren't No, it's not like that. No, no, <laughs> whatever. Um, but the devil stick, um, because the way you move it, it you'd think it was on string or it was magnets. Right. Um, and it's just the actual weight of right. it and, and working it, you know, in the air. Uh... Um, and many, if and it's been around a long time. They found pictures of these things on the pyramid walls. Wow. So a lot of people sort of uh, associate circus skills with Chinese. Um, and then the state circuses and all that, but it goes back a lot further. Um, and I can imagine someone performing that in front of me way back, you know, and, and then it would sort of look at black magic, work of the devil, it, you know, and, and that, that's my sort of um, what I, I sort of looked into many years ago, but um, who knows? What you Google, it might be wrong. That's, no, I, I, well, I, <laughs> it's a good answer. <laughs> it's, it's a very good answer. Well, you've won, the, you've won the lounge suite. Yeah, if fantastic. This, if, if this was a, if this was a quiz <laughs> yeah. show, so yeah, uh, and that's I was just about to say that's the devil's work, and someone yes. would have said that. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Um, and, uh, and what do you and you sort of you listen, you teach all these people, and you give all these people a wonderful time, and you make them relax. And I'm just thinking, how yeah. do you relax? Because is it the flip side? So do you then go uh, gun run? Running for some illegal third world country, or you? How, how do you switch off? Um, normally, comedy. Believe it or not, I okay. like to. I like to go and watch comedy. A friend of mine has a runs a comedy club in, in Middlesbrough. Um, Dean Moore, and uh, and he has a lot of fantastic acts on. And I like to go and sit and, and watch comedy, um, yeah. which is yeah, it's it's different. It's not. I do put a bit of comedy in. Um, I do have a, I do work with another colleague, of course, and and do a double act. So that's another story, you know. Oh and, uh, wow, we'll have to get so you both. I, and what's the double act? Yeah, that's uh, circus stars on tour. Um, oh right, okay. Myself and Tommy Bungle, the clown. Oh right, okay. Uh, and, and we do a double act show, like a family show together. Brilliant. Um, which, which is runs right, you know, family show, walkabouts, things like that. Excellent. Um, so, so that you know that so that comedy side and I use a lot of gags in that and use a few old Tommy Cooper gags and things like that which is uh, which always go down very well. And have you got like a hankering to do stand up yourself? Or are you happy just watching? Just watching. Do you know I think it's one of the hardest things in entertainment to do. Uh, well, I think you do one of the hardest things, which is entertaining. Really? Well, a lot of people say, yeah, a lot of people say entertaining that. Entertaining children. And, and what's amazing, just chatting to you today, is how, when we go back to your story, how it all began. Again, it was a chance, something you saw in a paper or magazine, and the amount of burlesque dancers I've spoken to and other uh, freak show acts and sword swallows, it always seems to be 
I saw an ad in a paper. I just saw something. Yes. Yes. Isn't that amazing? And we yeah. all know the story about Squeeze, the pop group, who yeah. famously, wasn't it? Uh, Chris, is it Chris Difford? And I'm going to get the names wrong now. Uh, but, <laughs> but one of them had put an ad in the paper and the other answered it. And then that produced some of the yeah. best songs. Yes. Anyway, uh, so yes. That's, yes. That's, there we go. There we go. So listen, I've got one more uh, question. And listen, I'll have to get you back on as your double act because that sounds fantastic. So yes. And, Yes, oh, that'd be good, yeah, we'll do that. And uh, so, uh, and my last question is, who do you think I should interview for my next show or a future episode? Who do you think I should have on? Oh, it's a tough one now, isn't it? Um, I, I would like you to um, speak to Tom Rolfe. Tom Rolfe, okay. Yeah. And what does Tom, Tom do? Tom, Tom's a circus entertainer, um, but also he has his own Tom Rolfe productions, and he runs um, pantomimes, um, shows, uh, he works with a double act, which is Double Trouble. Oh, right, okay, brilliant. Uh, and Double Trouble with Damien uh, and Damien Elliott, who was the nephew of the Chuckle Brothers. Ah, right, okay. So they're a great, there's a double act, one of the best double act, children's and family entertainment double acts I've seen. Well, so, say that now, it's here. That's well, <laughs> I've heard that. Well, yeah. listen, that's, there's, there's another little subgenre of, 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 you know, of family double act stuff so i'm definitely yeah. gonna have to get you guys on yeah. back on and then i'll track down yes. tom as well so that would be brilliant yeah, yeah. marco be thank you very much for coming on the podcast um, no, and i've lo loved hearing all about and that especially the stuff about normal wisdom i didn't know any of that at the beginning and that's just brilliant so thank you very much lovely thank you jeff that's been a pleasure you've been listening to funny peculiar tune in next week more great guests so a big thank you to Marco again for coming on the show. Again, if you want to track him down, uh, it's on Facebook. It's Mark Marco Taylor, or you can get him on Instagram at Marcos Circus. So you can find him there. So a big thank you to Mark again. Uh, and that was great to learn about Norm Wisdom and all the Tommy Cooper stuff. Uh, so keep downloading, keep telling your friends, more great guests coming up and keep it funny peculiar. <laughs>